Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 18 I have surely heard of Ephraim that's Joseph's son Ephraim has been a tribe that's separated from God in sin idolatry Ephraim has also to be claimed to be by the Mormons lies Mormons have nothing to do with Ephraim they have nothing to do with the Bible Bemoaning himself, thou hast chastised me, and I was chastised as a bullock on occasion to the yoke. <laughs> Hasn't been trained before. Put into the yoke. Remember, Jeremiah has been walking around yoke. Turn unto me, and I shall be turned, for thou art the Lord my God. So Ephraim has been in great misery. God's been correcting him and he's been fighting the correction and yet he's trying to come back surely after I was turned I repented and after that I was instructed there you go you turn you repent and then you're instructed Today, there is no repentance. And the instruction you get today is hogwash. You get feel good. You walk out of the church doors feeling good, feeling happy, no conviction. You had the love. You had a message may have been ages old that the pastor blew the dust off. It may have been, it matches the holiday of that week. Instruction is, hey, I've gotten right with God. Now that I've gotten right with God and I'm on the right path, what do I do to stay right? When I wrote my thing today, as I try to do every Saturday morning before we go to the farm, is right after Paul got saved, his words were, what will you have me to do? I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed. There's repentance. Yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I spank against him, I believe it's Hosea, I do earnestly remember him still. So God hasn't forgotten Ephraim. And yet those cl who claim to be of Ephraim, the Mormon, the replacement theology that God's all finished with Israel, word of Israel, we've got the great salt sea, we've got the great tabernacle we've got cities named for the cities of the Bible that's just as worse as the Catholic Church calling themselves Christians and they don't even know what Christians are I do earnestly remember him still that's God speaking therefore my bowels inside are troubled for him I will surely have mercy upon him, saith the Lord. Don't sound like the Lord's done with, with him. Now Levi was set away from the, being the tribe of Israel. Levi had a special stance as the priest and the priesthood. And God set forth by the prayer and the dedication that Jacob had to Ephraim and Manasseh when Joseph brought them to his father and his father said to the words let my name be upon these two boys as much as Reuben and God took the tribe of it, uh, Levi and he put in the replacement Ephraim and Manasseh and Joseph stands for two boys rather than one and that's how you get the twelve tribes 
half of Manassas stayed on the wrong side of the Jordan River. Set thee up way marks. For us, you'd be the, 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 the lines on a highway, the guardrails, the markers. Make thee high heaps. Set thy heart toward the highway. That's all a reference to the second coming of Jesus Christ. The King's Highway. Even the way which thou wentest. Turn again. O virgin of Israel. We looked at that verse earlier in this chapter. Turn again to these thy cities. So they're going the wrong way. They've been going the wrong way. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Backsliding is the wrong direction. We use that as, as Christians. Somebody's backsliding is they're not going the proper way they're supposed to be going. That's the stance of many churches today. Many Christians. For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. And there's coming a time in the tribulation period there's going to be a shortage of men. And we got a thing today in the world, women are put into offices. Women have been put into the workplace of men. That's in the Bible. There's a place, I forget where it says, in the law it says, said, I think seven or ten women shall grab one man and say, listen, we'll make our own bread, we'll, we'll, we'll cook our own meal, but we just want to be called by thy name. There's going to be a man shortage because they're going to be killed. They've been killed by Babylon. They've been killed throughout history. They were killed during the Nazi ravine. They're going to be killed by the Antichrist. But they're not going to be wiped out. Thus saith the Lord, the host, the God of Israel. As yet they shall use this speech in the land of Judah. And in the cities thereof. When I shall bring again their captivity. All right, Ezra and Nehemiah. The Lord bless thee, O habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. That's not Ezra and Nehemiah. That's the millennium. Because that mountain of holiness today, the dumb of the rock. And there's no justice in Israel today. You got Roman Catholics running around. You got Arabians running around. You got uh, uh, Hamas running around. You got the enemies of Israel running around in Jerusalem. Thank justice. And there shall they dwell in Judah itself, and all the cities thereof together, husbandmen, and they that go forth with flocks. So husbandmen, crops. And then the animals, livestock. For I had situated their weary soul, had replenished every sorrowful soul. Upon this I was awakened, second advent, and beheld, and my sleep was sweet unto me. That's God speaking. God's time of sleeping of the nation of Israel corporate is the time of the church age. And then the time of Jacob's trouble, he's chastising the nation. And then he wakens and comes and gets his children, Israel. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. And I will sow the house of Israel one 
and the house of Judah. Look at that. Both of them together now. That's not today. That's not Ezra and Nehemiah. That ain't time of Jesus. That ain't World War One. They ain't World War Two. They're not together yet. With the seed of man. I thought there was a shortage of men. And there's going to be a shortage of man, but there will be a seed of growth. And with the seed of beasts, animals, livestock, Israel is going to grow. And it shall come to pass that like, as I have watched over them to pluck up, and he's done that, Judges, Babylon, I meant the book of Judges, Babylon, Rome, Antichrist, Hitler, to break down, to throw down, to destroy, to afflict. That's history and that's, that's present day. So will I watch over them to build, to plant, saith the Lord. I don't think God's all done with Israel. In those days there shall say no more. The fathers have eaten sour grapes. Have you ever had sour grapes? I have. My house in New London, well, my parents' house in New London, growing up as a little boy, the neighbor's house had the grapes. Oh, those grapes smelled so good. And it was a whole, there was a rock ledge. The grapes grew. This, they grew wild. And they smelled good. And the smell would bring you to them. And you would grab some of them. And you would eat them. And they'd be they'd sour. Every year, you knew they were going to be, but you were hoping you bite into them, they'd be good. None of them were. His teeth shall be set on edge. So I know what that tastes like. Verse 3. But they're saying, they're saying, you know, God has chastised the, 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 the sons because of the father. You no, know, the sons are doing the sins that their fathers taught them. For everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. One thing the sins of Cana was when they picked up those sins of Cana, they taught their sons the sins of Cana. That's how the sins got so widespread in times of Jeremiah. That's why the second commandment. The second and third generation. Because they, listen. I grew up as a Roman Catholic. A Polish Roman Catholic. Uh, let me tell you what my history. At 18 I got saved. April 25th, 1987. Let me get this right. My great grandparents. Polish. Immigrants to America through Ellis Island. How they end up in London, Connecticut, I don't know. They went to a Polish Catholic church. They had three boys and one daughter. And raised them in the Catholic religion. My aunt was a dedicated Roman Catholic church lady. Though I don't ever remember her going, but she could have gone to another church. She had in her house... The, 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 the big murrow on the wall of Jesus' heart sticking out. That scared the fire out of me. And she had the Mary idols. And she had the Catholic candy. And that was just so good. But don't eat too much Catholic candy because it makes you go poop. Now my uncle, he tended the other Catholic church on the side of New London. I don't know how dedicated he was. My grandpa went to the, the Catholic Church Saturday nights and took me until I got to the age I tried to get out of it. I didn't want anything but to go to church, blah, blah, blah. Finally, I got to the age where I could make my decision and I got out. And then I got, I met Jesus Christ. I didn't meet the church. I met Jesus. But my grandparents taught their children. 
and their children taught their great grandparents me. As far as I know, my uncle's children were raised in the Catholic Church. I don't know where it goes from there. And they teach their children, they teach their children, they teach their children. But as far as the, the seed of my grandfather and his children and his grandchildren, me, the only one that's left, there will be no more teachings of the Catholic Church. It's stopped by the blood of Jesus Christ. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant, that hasn't happened yet, with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Combined. They're going to be brought together one day. They were separated at Rehoboam and Jeroboam. And they'll be brought together in unity under Jesus Christ. A new covenant. That hasn't happened yet. Not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day I took them by the hand and to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Which my covenant they break. Over and over and over. Although I was a husband unto them, you'll see that in Hosea, Lord willing. Say of the Lord. Israel broke the covenant that God made with them. They broke the law, they broke the judgment, they brought they broke the statute, they broke everything to do, and when we come to Jeremiah, it's broken. And even the book of Nehemiah, they broke in it. And in the time of Jesus, they broke in it. And even today they're broken. Listen, they 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 have the Passover today in America. And they take a piece of, of lamb. That they separate a piece of lamb and put it on a plate where supposedly the Messiah was in. The Bible says not a bone of him was broken, not a piece of a lamb, the whole lamb. And the law states for them to go to Jerusalem, to go to the temple, that's not there. They're living in the broken covenant now. We're not talking about right now this new covenant. But this shall be the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. One unity group after those days, tribulation. Say the Lord, I will put my law in their inward part. See the law? In the millennium, in the eternal life of the Jew, they are still under the law. I will write it in their hearts. I had a Pastor tell me one time about the law and the tribulation. Oh, it's not going to happen. You don't know the Bible then. Shut up. Pack up your pastorate. And give it to somebody who knows what they're talking about. The Jews are under the law corporately. Now a saved Jew today is not under the law for salvation. But still it would be proper to follow the law. It would be proper as a saved person not to commit adultery. But that's not going to save me. I will be their God. And they shall be my people. What do you do with that one? What do you do with that? For those that say that God's all finished with Israel. What do you do with that? You teach a lie. That's what you do. They shall teach no more every man his neighbor, every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for, thou, for they shall all know me. All! In the millennium, in the eternal life, there's not going to be no street preachers like me preaching the gospel anymore. They're going to know God, Jehovah, Jesus. They're going to recognize God, Jehovah, Jesus. From the least of them unto the greatest of them. From the least known, the, the least important 
unto the, the well known. That includes David, Elijah. They didn't know Jesus. Saith the Lord. And I will forgive their iniquity. And I will remember their sins no more. What do you do with that verse? That's just as much as the Christian today. I preach today at the farmer's market. The, the, the sins that are under the blood, God doesn't remember no more. They're not going to be brought to judgment. There's coming a time that as the nation of Israel corporate, well, they used to, they used to worship the queen of heaven. God said, I don't remember that. Well, look in the book of Jeremiah. That's okay. I still don't remember it. Now here we go. Thus saith the Lord. You know what? That's God speaking. Which giveth the sun for light by day. Man says evolution. The Big Bang. And the ordinance of the moon. And of the stars for light by night. Which divided the sea when the waves therefore roar. God says that ocean when it went. I have set a bound. Sometimes he loses that bound. Like he just did in, in Europe. The Lord of hosts. That host is the moon, the sun, the stars, the waves. All that God created. That's the host. Is his name. If those ordinances depart from. Be from before me, the sun, the moon, the stars, the waves. Saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. And there are some people who say, well, you know, the sun and the moon and the stars, they're going to roll up and burn up with the fervent heat. Yeah, true. Israel will be given the new earth. That's the eternal. God's looking at this side of life, of living. They're not going to cease from being a nation. Thus saith the Lord, if heaven can be measured. And I wonder if that's how what NASA is trying to do today with Hubble and all that, trying to measure Trying to prove God wrong. And if you would ever hear, we got the instruments, we're going to try to, we're going to, try to measure the outer space. You can mark the trying to disprove Jeremiah 31, 37. The foundation of the earth be searched out beneath. Right now they're sending uh, submersibles down to the the Marianas Trench in the Pacific Ocean. They go deep in the earth for coal, for gold, salt, subways, tunnels. But the devils would have in them to believe, you know, if you can't find the core, the center of the earth, then we'll destroy Israel. I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord. So if the moon quit, the sun quit, uh, Israel won't be a nation. If you can measure outer space, you can search the foundation. Of the, listen, the foundation of the earth is in hell itself. The Bible says there's a dark place you can't see. Behold the days, look how surety the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel will outlast the star, the moon, the planets, the suns. Behold the days come, saith the Lord, that the city shall, shall be built to the Lord, Jerusalem, 
from the tower of Haniel to the gate of the corn. That's that's Nehemiah too. A measuring line shall go forth against it upon the hill of Gebed, and shall compass Goth. The whole valley of dead bo dead bodies and of the ashes and all the fields from through the brook Kidron. Study that brook of Kidron in the Bible. That's where all the filth goes. The corner of the horse gate to the east, you'll find that in Nehemiah. Shall be holy unto the Lord. That's not Nehemiah. That's the millennium. It shall not be plucked up, you might 70 AD. Nor thrown down, you mean 70 AD? And any more forever. That's the millennium. That's the millennium. God ain't done with Israel. And it rests assurance to that if God has promised Israel to be a nation forever, and he holds the ordinance ordinances of his creation and said thus saith the Lord and when he says I'll never leave thee or forsake thee that you are my child and I will never ever unadopt you as much as my security in being a child of God saved by the blood of Jesus Christ so is the eternal security of the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel and the salvation of a Christian by the blood of Jesus Christ alone goes hand in hand. You can't lose it as much as you can lose Israel. If God would give up Israel, then God would give up on my soul. God's got two great promises, nation of Israel and the body of Christ. So what does the devil have you to think? God's all finished with Israel and you could lose it. It's not mine to lose. I, I, I preached about that today too. Imagine God just... Where did Uranus go? Alright, all the angels get together. Come on, I lost Uranus today. Help me to find it. Today I, I lost my cat. Rachel's cat. I couldn't find that cat anywhere today. I have a God who can't lose a cat. He can't lose his car. Well, he ain't got car keys. But he can't lose his car keys. I lost my car keys. My area here is I've lost a book. I lost a towel. I lost the pen. I lost that piece of paper. To be amazed, I'm sitting right here and I'm studying, and a, a piece of paper, I, I, where did I do? Where did it go? That ain't God. Rest your salvation, sure. There is one group of people called Israel that they are and is and will ever be, as much as Jesus Christ was, is, and forever will be, and so is my salvation. 